Welcome to the Blobsy Guys. We got a special show for you guys today. I'm Lance. I'm Sean. I'm Trusel. Yeah. So what we decided to do is actually stream the Apple event and get our live commentary about it. And we're not going to go through the whole thing. I'm sure in post editing we'll chop it up so it's a little bit shorter. Yeah. And the one thing you're going to have to guide me a little bit, Sean, because <laughs> Sean's already he stayed up late at night, got up early, right. so he could actually watch this live. I haven't seen it yet. I mm. know nothing about it, so it's going to be my first reaction. So that should be interesting. Same with Jusun. Jusun yeah. hasn't seen it before mm -hmm. either. So with that, I think uh, unless you guys have something else you want to, uh, I gotta say. Don't expect too much. <laughs> oh, don't spoil it for me. <laughs> okay, okay. I won't expect too much. Okay. Let's start. Yeah, let's start and uh, absolutely, let's start. We're yeah, we're starting a little bit in. Again, we're gonna chop through and jump through it, so you're not gonna watch the whole thing here. Yeah. But just our reaction to the important stuff. The team coup. No. Oh. It's got a little bit delaying. Oh, hopefully Stream, we're streaming the video. It was doing good when we said. <laughs> <laughs> it's interesting. The Siri. In many different languages. Korean? No. <laughs> and well, Japan. It's announcing Japanese. In Siri. Wow. That's a big one. If they can do Japanese, there's a lot of similarity. The grammar is the same, and you think that Korean will be soon behind. There was a rumor that Korean will be in within this year, but nobody's sure. We think our customers there are going to love it as they have in other parts of the world. So this is basically, you know, it's part of Steve Jobs' hype, you know, build up, build up, okay, this is what we've done, this is how great our products are, which is nice and it's part of the presentation, but yeah. you want them to get to it. I like everybody, you want them to get to it. Come on, start talking about what you're going to give us. <laughs> yeah, numbers, they show all the numbers every, every time. It's an amazing number, and it's an amazing virtuous cycle. So my big question, you know, I've been living with this iPad 2. Actually, I got this iPad 2 for, for Blogsy, for our company, so we could test it on an iPad 2. <clears throat> and it's only a 16 gig, so I've been really disappointed, only 16 gigs. So I've been anxiously waiting. We've got to get an iPad 3 for, for our company anyway, and I also want to upgrade, so I've been anxiously waiting. Come on, be something good, make it worth upgrading. <laughs> Just a few years earlier. Yeah, 25 billion app downloading. That's amazing. If only we could just get one billion of that, that would be good. <laughs> right. We are a few of them. Yeah. <laughs> We're a drop in the bucket. <laughs> iCloud is playing the iCloud. Yeah, I'm hoping they. It's Maybe not during this announcement, but soon they fix this. this. I think there's a lot of issues with iCloud. That I don't like, <clears throat> for example, I have to do a lot of screenshots of Blogsy for our translators showing, okay, this is the language it's going to be in, this way it's going to look. And automatically those fill up my, my uh, photo stream. And yeah, I could go there and delete them, but it's already pushed out all the other photos that were previously there. So they need a lot of refinement. And also, I wouldn't mind being able to share my photo stream with other people. That's another yeah. thing which I haven't been able to do you know, without giving out your, your credentials. And then also, what about households? A lot of households have multiple iTunes accounts. My wife is on a different iTunes account because we live in Korea. She's Korean. She's got to have an iTunes Korea account. And so I want to be able to have that photo stream in one place, get it on my I Apple TV. It, it, there's just so many hurdles to get through that it just isn't really... You can separate the iTunes account from... Uh, there's a different iTunes account for iCloud and App Store. You can separate those. So, so we could share a similar, a similar photo stream. 
you're saying, but we have different iTunes accounts. Apple TV. Uh, no. Yeah, no, that's, that's, the, that's yeah. that would be actually the best would be to have two photo streams be able, but to have multiple sign in ability. Mm. And the same, same in iTunes. You know, I have to sign out of my account, sign into her account. And you guys know if you have this, if you want to update apps, you know, we all deal with it, right? Because we're in a Korea and we have both America and iTunes and Korean iTunes. And so when you want to update apps, some of them are in one store, it shows, oh, you have to update these, but you can't if you're signed into the American one. So then you got to sign out and sign into the yeah, ground. That's a hassle. A big hassle. Yeah. They just announced a new Apple TV. What did they say about it? I missed it. <laughs> no, it just said it's, it's not new, it's the same design, but they support one uh, 1080p, 1080p HD. That was the rumor, yeah, 1080p. Yeah. And they changed the UI a little bit, so now you see some icons. But that should be that should be a software upgrade, right? Yeah, but the 1080p is the hardware. Right, right. So that's the only one for the new Apple TV. But as far as this UI, can you get it in the previous? That's what I'm thinking, but I'm not sure, but I guess so. But I can't do the upgrade because I've got my jailbroken. So until they come out with a new jailbreak. <laughs> And they announced the uh, movies for iCloud, which means now within with your with your iTunes match, you can download your movies, you purchase it, any devices you want. But it's the walled garden, isn't it? I mean, if I buy the movie within iTunes, then I can do that. But if I bought the movie through Amazon or somewhere. Right. They don't allow the. Uh, they look it's different from music. Yeah, in, in case of music, you can unload even your torrented music to iTunes Match and you can download the, the version on the Apple server. But, but I don't think the movie is the same. You torrent music? Oh, come on. In case I don't torrent music. Genius is now built in. So Apple TV will recommend movies for you. Do you based use on Genius? The movies you've already watched. Not really. Some based on uh, the King's Speech. No. On the Incredibles. Now to bring the I understand why it's important for them, but as a now user, I, I just don't use it. That's just right. Like we've done for music and TV shows. And they recommend the uh, similar the ones you like, but I want to discover like some new about. new ones that mm. I don't I don't like. I don't even I don't know. That's a good point. Yeah, yeah. discovery yeah. instead of they need genius discovery. Anytime, right. No additional cost. But I guess they figure that's uh, and watch my favorite you know the recents really or the most popular. Cost. Maybe that's what they consider discovery. Hmm. Hmm. So. I don't really um, search first. I mean, um, browse some movie within iTunes. I just. When I have some movie that I want to watch, I go to iTunes and search for it. So, I don't really need And then get sticker shock. Oh, what? I gotta pay that much? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and I go to Pirate Bay. <laughs> Do you know this movie? No, what is this? I think it's a new movie, but I forgot the title. They should. They are demoing some movie in Apple TV. I just saw Hugo. They saw it. Do you like it? It got a lot of hype. Oh. So, so that always I was expecting more. It's not a bad movie, but it's not amazingly great to me either. I thought it's it's good for watching with your family. Yeah. Uh, they all thought it was interesting. That's it for Apple TV. I loved Moneyball. I oh, thought that really? was a great movie. Mm -hmm. Very interesting movie. But that's, you know, I guess that's personal taste. Mm -hmm. I heard if you're a sports fan, that would be really interesting. Yeah, I'm not a baseball fan, mm -hmm. but still, it's got a couple things. I do enjoy sports, and it deals with Numbers. I love numbers. Uh, well, you know, numbers are very interesting to me. Yeah. Charts and graphs and stats and everything. But I, I want to watch it. Yeah. 
I wish they would have actually gotten more into the details of the stats they were going through, but probably would have bored most people. Mm. Now Tim Cook is talking about iPad finally. Almost 15 and a half million iPads just last quarter long. And to put this in some context, we need more. So yeah, we so need <laughs> Please, sell <still> more. <laughs> and more Blasi too. <laughs> this is interesting that HP sold same amount of PC, whole PC, within the same uh, quarter with the uh, iPad. But you know, it's just not about the numbers. iPad is showing off. Yeah, I, I was reading some article and they were saying, Maybe the PC industry is dying. Yeah. And once they get a tablet that can do everything, it'll definitely replace a laptop. You know, right. once once they get to that point, it's not anywhere near that now. But yeah, I think PC is going more about professionals, right. designers or programmers, which I would think is going to hurt too because uh, that means you have a smaller install base for software. So the price of this professional software, the developers have to charge more for it. Yeah. We set out to create not just a new product, but a new category. And we said that in order to do that, that the iPad had to be the best device. It's true. It's a hard to imagine a time without it. I already feel that way. Yeah. Like, what did I do without the iPad? I, I you know, I managed, but. A lot more things were more difficult, and, and right, exactly. They're like, ah, I'll do it later, or you know, yeah. the fun has been only two years, <laughs> well, less than two years, and we already are used to it. And it's an interesting product for me too, because usually with products like the i the iPod first came out, I didn't get it for like two years. You know, I'm not one of the first version adopters typically. Yeah. Usually I wait for version 2 and you hear everything, they iron everything out. But the iPad, I got it within a couple months of it being out. Mm. So, yeah. And I, I'm really happy. <laughs> if you recall that the complaints people said when the first iPad came out that it's just large iPhone, large iPod touch. <laughs> No difference, but it's, you know, see the results. <laughs> he just brought up reading books. Do you yeah. read books on it? I just started. I, I didn't read e-books before, but with the Steve Jobs biography, I started read on my iPad. Actually, on my iPhone, because I read books on, on the subway a lot. But iPad is too big to me, and since I have, I have my iPhone on, in my pocket, I read, I can read iBooks with my iPhone too. So, but eBooks definitely good because it's it's not heavy. If you carry around the books, it's very heavy and you know build it, your bag. You don't have a problem with the screen or your eyes or anything? Like no. Uh, my eyes is okay until now. I'm not that old. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I guess for me, I could never start reading books on the iPad. And I don't know if it's a screen or just the feeling of the device or something. I just never felt comfortable reading books. I couldn't get into it. Maybe there's too many distractions. Hey, I can play games, I can do internet, so I and just never read. Mm. So I actually bought a Kindle, mm. Kindle Touch, and uh, uh, with the, what is it called, the e-ink, and I'm really, yeah, I'm, I'm digging that, and it, maybe it feels like an escape to me, mm. a, and to me that's what a book should be. Okay, I want to I wanna move away. If, I'm going to read a book, let's mm. get rid of all distractions, and so maybe the separation of devices, also not just the fact that I think the e-ink is better, but actually that separation of devices is, is a good thing. And it's also light, but yeah, I don't carry it with me, I don't read on the subway and stuff, so the portability of it is not as important. You can see photos and videos that are mentioned in the tweet on the big beautiful screen. I still prefer the paper, paper book. Uh -huh. Yeah, it's all the personality, I think, no. still. It looks like a yeah, and, and it makes sense. I mean, 
they always say, oh, you can carry a thousand books in your hand. You don't read a thousand books at once. Right. You know, you just read one book until you finish it typically and then read another one. So sometimes you feel like reading this book and other times you feel like reading that book, but you can't carry all the books at once. You know. some, maybe it's a personal taste in reading, but I never do that. Once I start a book, mm, I finish that book. Yeah, me too. And then go to the next. So right. it's not that important to me to carry lots Marking of books. But I, I do read to my daughters. So that in that situation, I have books on there that I read to my daughter, uh, read to my daughters, and then I can easily switch to the one I'm reading myself. So then in that case, I am doing two books at least. Yeah. One thing I started to feel is really good is the audiobooks. I never listened to the audiobooks before, but I, I read the Steve Jobs book with audiobooks. And it's really, really nice. I mean, I can Everybody's listen to it when I walk down the street. And well, stop wondering. It's easy to understand. We are. Oh, now he's announcing the new iPad. They don't call it iPad 3 or iPad HD. Today they just call it the new the iPad. The new iPad. <laughs> and it is amazing. We've taken it to a whole new what? level. <laughs> The new iPad? How, how, is, how, how are you going to refer to it then? Everybody's just going to call it iPad 3. I don't know. To me, it's the same with the iPods. There's no iPod 1, iPod 2, iPad 3. They just call it first generation, second generation, third generation iPod. So I think people will call this too. So I'm calling it third generation iPad when I write or tweet something. I'd like to I'm calling it iPad 3. <laughs> Phil Schiller is on, on the stage. Well, good morning, everyone. Did you want to know about the new iPad? I'm glad. Hmm. First, you think now it the starts. New iPad, the Retina display. Yeah, heard of course. Could have a retina display. No surprise there. Right. But until you see it, you can't understand how amazing this is. That's what I was just going to say. Until yeah. I see it, I won't know. That's true. That's true. true. First from the iPhone 4. And it's incredible. And to this day, no one has yet matched that display technology in any mobile device. I wonder if you can listen to this audio. we're going to bring it to the 9.7 inch screen of the iPad. Now this presents a problem for us in presenting it to you, because for the first time, yeah. <laughs> an iPad has higher resolution than this entire display behind me. More pixels. Right. So everything has more pixels than is going this TV. Down. <laughs> really? Yeah. Time. But we'll we'll do our best. This is 1080p. So for example, when you turn on that new more iPad, pieces than you are this. going to see wow. graphics, text, icons sharper. I wonder why they didn't compare bubbles. Hmm. When you go yeah. to read a book, but, you're going to you know, see text it has rivals higher it. resolution than this TV, so you can't actually TV. compare. Right. Everything you do is just going to look stunning. It looks same to web, us. <laughs> reading your emails and photos are just going to look amazing at high resolution on that gorgeous big display. And this helps customers around the world, particularly if they read in different languages, Character-based languages like Japanese and Chinese, yeah. the fonts are amazing. It really is, is a big step forward. Well, the new iPad display is 2048 by 1536 mm -hmm. pixels. And if you do the math really quick, you'll figure out that's over 3.1 million pixels on this display. But the it's still ever in a mobile device. lower than Put iPhone way, 4. Many of you the, all the, have I mean, PPI, TV the pixel per inch the is, 50 inches, iPhone 60 is inches, higher. Have I wonder a resolution why. Of 1920 by iPhone, you need to look an closer. I think that's next why. To that. um, it has more pixels. Let's overlay the yeah, photos, the same showed. photo as they could be displayed on each of these devices. You see the iPad shows over a million more pixels than your own HDTV does at home. <laughs> Of course, to display that many pixels, we pack them really tightly. There are 264 pixels per inch in this display. Yeah. And that is enough to call it a retina to display. But why is that? Well, you may recall when we launched the iPhone, we See? said that the iPhone, when held at a normal distance, 
10 inches or closer, <laughs> has enough pixels that your retina in your eye can't distinguish those individual pixels. And yes, there's real math behind that. Experts <laughs> agree with us. Well, the same say, is true of the new iPad. It's 15 you hold it at a normal from your distance, in this case 15 inches or even closer, <laughs> yeah. your retina <laughs> and your eye cannot discern those individual pixels. There's enough pixel density that you can't pick up the iPhone is higher, iPhone is 3, 26. Look stunning. The new iPad display also and when you print something, professional printing, you print it with the, the 300 so side by side, you're going to see actually images just pop iPhone is higher than so the printing DPI, uh, DPI and but iPad is almost close. Four times the number of pixels on the new iPad display. So it takes a lot of graphics. Yeah, I'd like to figure that whole thing out, that find a printer that I could smooth and print directly from my iPad. Views. Still, there well, doesn't the seem to be that many out there. Apple design chip, which is the best chip in a mobile device to drive a great display, but we needed even more horsepower for this new iPad and its new CPU. Display. So we've created the Apple A5X chip. It's not A6. <laughs> Do core? Quad core graphics. Quad, quad core? Quad yeah. core graphics designed specifically for, for graphics. the retina display oh, to drive no. four times the number of pixels. Well, how does that compare to what others I wonder why they did A5X. Well, that gives me a feeling they're like soon the going to come out with the 6, A6. Yeah, I think they'll put A6 <laughs> in their iPhone the 5. The Apple A5 was already twice as fast. And the new A5X brings four times the performance. It is a graphics oh, performance. Yeah. Graphics performance. Because you notice, I notice that too. My wife's got my original iPad 1. Than any mobile device and it's just slow had. compared to the iPad 2. Yeah. So if this is 36 even resolution, double that, 3 million pixels. wow. Hmm. There's greater color saturation as the but A5X I think quad core graphics. You can feel it when you play some game or something. This is not the normal the app. Best mobile display that has ever I, I, yeah, I guess I'm thinking about easy. loading. That's the first you always seem to be loading. Loading is not about graphics. I think the loading speeds will be almost the same. But the, the loading speed between the iPad 2 and the iPad the 1 is quite different to me. Yeah, because they camera. use a different CPU, well, you know, but I think that, it's my guess, but I think the camera. A5 and A5X so has some similar speed, the speed, the speed of processing, but they have higher right. speed of graphics. Now the back we have a camera. Come on, when that camera gets <laughs> this is important to me. quality and capability, they can proud to use it as your everyday camera for photographs. We call it an iSight camera. And the new iPad has a great iSight camera. It's a 5 megapixel backside illuminated sensor. We brought the optics. It's difficult. It's the same iPhone as your OS, iPhone 4S camera. So it's really great. Good. Yeah. It. That's, an ISP I was begging for that. Everybody says, why, says, why you want to take pictures, with your, uh, want to take pictures with your iPad? I want to take pictures with my iPad. Okay, I'm a geek. I don't care. In the restaurant, like, look at this. <laughs> it's okay. Well, let me show you some quick pictures taken with this new iPad. Yeah. The iPad has much better pictures. Uh, auto exposure, so it has great exposure, great color. It has auto focus. Wow. This video it's is quite a, it's pretty good. Detail it picks up, and you see what, the lens what about great edge to edge sharpness. In the dark, does it have a camera? It or does it have a, a, a flash or light? I don't think take it has. Individual or group shots, it knows just what to do. So it's all daytime pictures. There's auto exposure mm -hmm. lock and auto focus lock, so you can compose exactly the photograph in, you want. In a dark place, it I don't use flash. Do you use flash? Oh, there's just that. Unless it's dog. Yeah, it looks similar. <laughs> Our dog is also a, so it has a border collie. So this is the largest, the largest dog in the world. Largest dog in the world? Yeah, the, he, he just said, said that, but I, I don't know if it's true or not. No, that's not true. Built into an iPad. Number three. HD video recording now at 1080p resolution. Maybe we can yeah. shoot our show. Full with. HD resolution. Right. So okay. wherever you are, you want to grab a video for work or play or school, you've got a great camera built in to do that with. Let me just play a very quick typical home movie clip that you might grab with your iPad and its 1080p camera. Looks like they changed the software some. Because the did you notice it, they had the red now the red recording button, high quality mm -hmm. camera right by the home button. Go. But there's a lot more to it. We use that A5X in the previous shot. Was it different? It looked different from what I remember. Image stabilization. Oh. 
So what we've got here is a video I'll show you of what it's like with image stabilization turned off and what it's like with it turned on. And it's always turned on, but I think you'll be able to see the difference here because it's it always turned on. The sensor. Yeah. You don't have the option. But here's the video as if it were unstabilized. And now here's what our software does to stabilize it. It's really nice. I think they did a great job pretending there wasn't a camera in front of them as they walked along the dock, didn't they? <laughs> so that's 1080p video recording, video stabilization. We do temporal noise but reduction to help improve I don't know. quality and low light. If I have iPhone 4S and, and it is iPad, perfect to watch these videos third generation iPad, I'll use display. my iPhone 4S because it's smaller. Right? Fourth feature, I, I... voice dictation. <laughs> Of course, the iPad, like all great iOS devices, has a software it's not Siri, just from Apple that's built I don't know, to me, they have this big screen that you can shoot video, video on the bottom, and the ability to hold it with my so big, gigantic type, hands, you can just tap it's just better it, than iPad, holding the little camera. And, what you have to yeah, say. so I it think I would like prefer this. this if I had them both. Yeah. It's day 12 here in Barcelona, comma, which means two more days left before we have to leave, period. I'm so not ready to Will this work in Bloxy natively? It's amazing here, period. Or do we have to... Yeah, it, it works for every here home with me, text comma, build, so it would work. Period. <laughs> yeah. That's it. But That's we're, we're, like we're not using text the field on the rich side. But we are using the keyboard. So we'll it's to Yeah, I think it will work. IPad, oh, that is so cool. <laughs> English, in yeah. US English, British English, Australian English, French, German, and of course now, Japanese. So that's the uh, expectation. I am the Japanese <laughs> people. <laughs> Next generation wireless. 4G LTE. <laughs> uh, I don't think I would get a wireless one. It's already had great wireless Right, I'll get, I'll get uh, Wi-Fi. It supports networks like right. EVDO with a maximum theoretical downlink of 3.1 <laughs> megabits per second. And it has supported HSPA, for example, in GSM networks, with, with a maximum downlink. Yeah, it'd be nice, but I just don't spend enough time on the road. But now with the new yeah, to justify it. Right. Me great too. Deal more. Like I said, We're in the road HSPA or in the subway or while I'm with, where I'm moving, I always use my iPhone. And if you haven't heard about this, it's great. It's more portable, more it's smaller. Which we're starting to see show up in and also here in Korea, you can, the through the service providers, you can do that hot linking, what's it called, where you... Personal hotspot? Yeah, personal hotspot. So, the, if you really need to get on, you just do it through your iPhone. Yeah. And he'll talk about it right now, but he support the personal hotspot too on your iPad. So, let me give you so you can a couple everyday turn on, if your iPad is supports 3G or 4G, you can turn the hotspot on and then you can use the your MacBook and we have LTE connected being used to your by the one on the right. iPad. These are actually recorded so I can play wow. them back and you can see them right here on the big screen. And it's a simple everyday task. You're gonna, I'm going to click on an email that has a bunch of embedded photos and see what happens. So here we go. We select the top new email message that came in and on the right you'll see the photo will come in faster on LTE. In fact, the next large photo will come in. And the next one, before even the first photo, starts to show up on HSPA. Yeah. So we're all done. We'll work faster, large too. Photos on LTE, <laughs> and we're still waiting for the second one on HSPA. So that's one example of the difference of using it in everyday tasks. Simply the things we download. Applications. Vimeo. Yeah, music. Vimeo. Emails. Vimeo. There's a different kind of thing. <laughs> We all like to do great things like watch videos on our iPad, surf the web to sites like Vimeo, and watch HD, high quality video. Do you notice, but if, you don't if I've watched the same video video on my the iPad for a while and wait, as and I do on my play. laptop, over the same wireless network, right away, it seems like the iPad loads slower. Right. I think it's because so what on your iPad so they play, and this is a uh, great send you film, the, the film from the Zuckerman Studios. And on the LTE, it starts higher movie. Right no, I mean, you can see what it's the used, it's, it doesn't on. support flash, but on your desktop, you can watch it shows a flash video. On the device so I think that flash video, more people see flash videos, so I think it's faster. Server, more server supports it, I don't know if it's... I think that's why it's faster. That would make sense. It fundamentally changes how you experience things like video. So that's 
what it's like to use these high-speed new networks. We're working with a, a lot of people want it. to support okay. LTE on the new iPad, and we're working with AT&T, I think without Verizon, Steve Jobs, they Rogers, try to more try to do more humor, LTE more jokes, <laughs> but we have other high-speed more networks lighter around the world. Now, as you remember, with 3G, when 3G phones first start showing up. They actually have many different bands, so you got different phones for different networks around the world. Yeah, you know, we haven't seen it yet. They start to come together. <laughs> but there was a lot of rumors about a 7 inch version. In fact, even more so. Yeah. Right. There are many bands <clears> around the world. And I think. To me, that scares me if they were to do that. Because one of the problems to me, what happened to Apple when Steve Jobs left and the company went down, is they started to dive, you know, get into too many products. And then when Steve Jobs came back, he said, no, this is our quadrant. You know, let's focus on, very focused on what we need. And if they start putting out an iPhone, uh, you know, a seven inch model, then that signals to me, without Steve Jobs there, they're starting to get diversified and not and they're losing their focus. Right. You know, it would scare me for the future of Apple. Right, State exactly. Hotspot. After I read so that book, Steve Jobs, like, I'm more worrying about the future of Apple because I saw in the book that how Steve Jobs, his, uh, his power is affected to the company. Has 4G LTE. It is fast. His plus effort to focus. I think uh, that's really brilliant, you know, what he did, that that one thing when he came back to the company, that quadrant. Here, here's these four things, that's all we're going to do, let's focus and make it the best. I know there's so many talented people in Apple, but there's got to be someone to say no. no to or push them to say, yes, you can do this, both ways. Right. There's the A5X chip with quad-core graphics. There's a 5-megapixel EyeSight camera. There's 1080p video recording. There's voice dictation. And it is the most wireless band... You ever tried to do device, voice dictation, though? Capped off with 4G LTE. Yeah, not many times, but I've you tried. You know, a long time ago I tried with a, a lot of these on a PC. <laughs> <laughs> but it's really hard. Because y y when you're typing, you can stop and think and, you yeah. know, I want to say it this way. But when you naturally talk, you do a lot of like, um, okay, then, um, and you can't do that when you're doing dictation. Right. So. <laughs> you have to think all the sentences first and start to dictate. The same 10 hours of battery life for all the things you do. And when you're on 4G, nine hours. So the team has worked incredibly hard over this kind of battery performance so you can use it all day long. So it's thicker, Yet I'm guessing. A little bit thicker. Yeah, a little bit thicker, a little bit heavier. Just 9.4 millimeters. What was the old one? Amazingly light. Old, just one old, the or iPad 2? Yeah. So I think I heard that it's uh, comes in black 0. 0.6 millimeter thicker. So it's it probably is <laughs> very little <laughs> thicker. <laughs> but the weight is different. Yeah, what is a little bit heavier. So the new iPad, you remember the iPad 2? I think if Steve Jobs was alive, he'll gigabytes. never well, make really it bigger or heavier. The new iPad will be priced at just four hundred ninety nine. If it's point, I, I don't think that's a big problem if it's point six six you know, millimeters. Yeah, I know, but I think it's the first <laughs> Apple device that got bigger. <laughs> From the previous but it's not their only thing, it's LTE. You know, I think the yeah, components for LTE are thicker too. I, I don't know. I think the main thing is about battery life. The same prices as the iPad 2 before it. And the new iPad will be available on They don't March have 16th. that realistic distortion <laughs> field. So <laughs> you can't make it thinner. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to play as badly as I do, you'll be happy to know that the pre-orders start today. So, on March 16th, the new iPad will be available Start in the U.S., and, uh, March Canada, 6th, U.K., 16th. France, Germany, no Korea. Japan, Hong Kong, Singapore, and Australia. March 16th. Really big, fast start. But it doesn't it's stop there. One week, one week later, riding 25 no more Korea again. So we are going to have the fastest rollout we've ever had for new devices. I don't know when they will release it. I think... 
Sam Samsung is kind of blocking it. Or this is going to be amazing when yeah, you turn it on. Slower. Because of all the litigation, all the suits really and yeah. everything. Yeah. Make all the software that comes on that iPad look gorgeous. Well, then so that means i got to talk to my friend. He's going to America, and if he can get it delivered in time, then he will uh, when you're reading your emails, he'll bring it back for me. It'll look good. Take full advantage of that retina display. When you're using your photos, the I think we need one to test our fully retina up display. Updated. Take advantage of no, all that amazing color and resolution. Everything's been updated. That means we have to release a version of Bloxy before before, the 16. The display, no, the not necessary because it all works fine better, without the retina display the uh, images. But the text, they but just they could do recommend to make them developers so to right the make it faster to update the images. They look great. Things are scaled up with the four times the number of pixels and text because of our text APIs and libraries look stunning. So everything will work great. But if the developer takes a little bit of time, just as they did with the iPhone, they can do things with their applications that are just mind-blowing, amazing, incredible, using that retina display and the A5X chip. So we've asked a few developers just to spend a week and take a look at the new iPad and show us what Why they can do us? with all that amazing <laughs> graphics work on. Yeah. So we're going to bring up three demos. You might to travel show you to San Francisco. Some really amazing stuff. <laughs> the first. I would have paid for that. Is from Namco. They'll pay Namco for us. Namco is a great that developer of a lot of titles on the iPad. If they iPad. Titles of everything from Pac-Man to Sky Gamblers. And I'm really excited to bring this, bring up James. This Shelton. is boring part. James is the game design director for Namco. James. Welcome. Thank you. <laughs> Hi everyone, I'm joined up here by Rezvan Bareitaru from Revo, and uh, today we're thrilled to show you a first glimpse of our new flight sim game, Sky Gambler's Air Supremacy, running on the new iPad. Have you been able to make that jump? Do you, do you play games on your iPad? Great gaming uh, experiences are about times. immersion. When you do, really what kind of game? Lose yourself in the game. I just and play some casual games. Helps us achieve like this in just two time ways. killing games like First, Angry Birds. And the graphics performance. I don't play some 3D the level games of like this. Of everything in the game. Yeah, same. And I'm not. <clears throat> the astonishing you know, resolution of on my Xbox, I'll play GTA or some some action. Packed games, but on my iPad, I've, I've tried the GTA. I downloaded it. I've tried it. It's, it's a good app. I'm not saying it's bad, but it just doesn't. I haven't gotten over that hurdle of it being this interactive, you know, war fighting. I want casual games. Now, aerobatic maneuvers like this are just what real planes can do. The keys love the games on iPad. But simple gesture-based controls, even novice players. Yeah, my my daughters download games nonstop. And patrol and show us a little more of that action. Let's see, I've been addicted to, and actually I finished it, water. All right, we water. Uh, carrier yeah, there. water with that, that, that uh, alligator. Why don't you take out the carrier first? Oh, uh, do you know the game it's, uh, Yeah, I downloaded the free version. version. Yeah, I, I finished it. <laughs> how, like, how to play? Uh, it's, it's pretty cool. Actually, we should do it in another episode when yeah. we cover apps. <laughs> it looks similar to that uh, cut the rope thing. Oh, uh, yeah. Okay. Oh that's, no. That's 50 jets up there. This is the uh, preview video. I don't want the preview video. Okay, let's out. talk about it. Do this next episode. Okay. It'll pop that chute and uh, you can uh, live to fly another day. You got to get the water to the alligator. So this is easy. And then you got to get the three ducks. They fill up with water. So you dig holes and stuff. Sky oh. And it gets pretty complicated because you have different kinds of liquids. Oh. And they can't touch the ducks and they have different and properties. And not even this giant then you get trap doors that, that you gotta get to open. It sounds fun. Yeah, it's very casual. The intensity of it's more of a puzzly kind of game. That's the game kind of games I like. Yeah. Instead I think of the action game. It looks Gambler's that developers are the same with the cut the rope. The design looks similar, but I'm not sure. Yeah, I don't think it is, but but yeah, it has a very good design. Thank you, James. Yeah. There's 
It's absolutely incredible. You know, I, I was surprised too. I heard the other day that <laughs> actually Angry Birds, there was an earlier version done by another company that was the same basic principle sure you've heard of, Autodesk uh, yeah, of launching and breaking up stuff. But Angry Birds did it right. Right. You know, the graphics played in with the music, played in with the levels, you know, the story behind it. In, so, yeah, it's always true. You don't have to be first to succeed. In. It doesn't mean succeed that you be the first. There's every aspect being uh, together. Right. For every McDonald's, there's a Burger King. But yeah. but that, that implies that Two both were huge. Ago, it seems like uh, first on the iPad with apps, on iOS, either you're huge or you're profound impact nobody knows about you. Company. Mm. You know, it's not like Today, you have Burger King and, have and, uh, and McDonald's. Titles on the app store you have that been whatever, Burger King and nothing. 20 million mm. times. Let me put that in perspective. In oh. our 29-year history, <laughs> Autodesk has become a leader in software with over 10 million professional customers on desktop. With iOS, I'm not, we've been able to I'm not really reach into games. Tens you know, of millions. South Koreans are famous about in only two StarCraft. Years. Yeah, computer it's games. Amazing. Koreans are Today, not I'm console to games. Something new. Right. Koreans really don't do PlayStation, game, Xbox, that I kind of stuff. It's all computer. I heard uh, almost every top rankers in StarCraft are, are Koreans. And Koreans were rebelling too against the new version of StarCraft. Yeah, I think they learned how to be great at StarCraft Two. I think it is. And when StarCraft Three came out, they're like, "No, it's crap. Don't do that." <laughs> yeah, I think it's true. You'll notice right away that we take a lot of Yeah, this is pretty cool. The sketchbook. We have two customizable panels on the side. One. For ink styles, sketch, the other for uh, color sketchbook app from We have Autodesk. an inkwell on top for quick access to color selection and a simple toolbar. For ink, we developed a brand new engine, one that really takes advantage of the incredible graphic power of the new iPad. This is not an ordinary vector application. This is the first time I watched this demo. It's not the same technology and it's not the same interaction. It's resolution independent. We need, we need to use so that in like our description. No how I love that. You, zoom, you know, we built a new engine. <laughs> can we say that about Bloxy? It's a part of Bloxy. Also allows us to export <laughs> We've redesigned our engine. <laughs> we can call the drag and drop engine. <laughs> so, um, you know, there's a reason why they call this the visual arts. You have to see I don't know how difficult, eyes. how complex it should be to be engine. Is <laughs> it takes it to the next level and creates an immersive environment. It seems he's pretty good painter. Everyday artists mm. are going to love this device and it's going to inspire them to create beautiful pieces of artwork, just like what Lawrence has been creating for you live today. Which by the way, dude, that's pretty amazing. For 90 seconds. <laughs> uh, he's Asian too. <laughs> <laughs> Asian is good at art. <laughs> And technology will be available this April exclusively on iOS. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's a stereotype, isn't it? You see the, the Asians coding in the back room, uh, but then you get the, the Westerners out there presenting or whatever. Things, uh, but, so it's nice to see, see yeah, Asians right. out there presenting. Using your finger to draw on the resolution of the display that you cannot even see pixels with vector drawing tools is truly a breakthrough. Well, for our third and last demo, Epic Games. Now, of if course. you know Epic Games, you know they've created some landmark titles. <laughs> they always titles did the demo. They've pushed the boundaries of what anyone thought was possible in a mobile so device. So the second one was the photo. Third one's going to be a game. First one was a game too. I yeah, I missed it. Yeah, first one is the to show you flight simulation project. game. Yeah, they must new iPad. I'd like to bring up make a lot of money off of games, and so game. they're really right. focusing on games. Yeah, that too, and uh, I think games can show that power of the hardware. So Good morning, everybody. Show it. Uh, yeah, Blogsy's not going to show it. <laughs> Look at how so much different it is. Right. <laughs> Your blog post in 3D. <laughs> and, uh, in 0 0.2 seconds. <laughs> so today I'm going to introduce Epic's Rod Ferguson and the latest chapter in the Infinity Blade saga, Dungeons. 
So in dungeons, you are the apprentice to the master of the forge, and you're on a quest to craft the ultimate weapon, the Infinity Blade. So you guys are in for a visual feast of unprecedented detail today. I mean, seriously, these leaves here are blocking the light from the sun, right? So let's dive into this event. No, Apple and announced that. As soon as you go in, you're going to notice that your eyes top downloaded apps the ever. Cool see. grays are going to give way yeah. to the warm the orange top ones are almost and the games. Logos. That's a technique called mm. tone mapping that our cinematographers People are really to dynamically adjust Anything tops something as far as apps. And of course, I look like at it and just pray in the blog and we'll be in it. <laughs> but I already knew Vlogsy's not in the yeah. top. Yeah, well, that's enough sight to see uh, so We're going to craft the Infinity Blade. Oh, cool. I the fire soul oh. from the Spider Queen. You know the problem they got to figure oh, out, and th huh? maybe this is part of the hurdle. Is, no, I haven't found, for games like this, action games, I haven't found the touch screen to be an effective way to control anything. You have no feedback to know, yeah, I'm touching the button I should be touching. So I end up, like in GTA on the iPad, I've got a, a race i got to do. And I keep going, oh, turn left, turn left, and I'm pressing above where I should be pressing to turn left. Um, and so yeah, I can never win. The only thing it's all about the money. you can it, control it's better is the racing game. You, know, oh, sweet, you can control that, that motion. Mm. You're right. That's yeah. that's good. Uh, so that's and good. and someone's got to d develop a little dongle right. <laughs> that I could take and input into my uh, iPad and then use my the Xbox the controller, now. wireless uh, controller, and no. control it with that. And then and then. You'd, I think you'd get a lot more gameplay. I don't know about the iPad, but for iPhone, there's a, some case with that controller so you can play some games. Yeah, and there's those old funky ones where you you put the game in and it's it looks like an old uh, you know, arcade, arcade game. Yeah, that's cool. Yeah, but it's all done through Bluetooth. It's all really gimmicky, you, you know, and, and it's for old style games. It's not really designed for this kind of game. Right. So I really like again. This could be it, Mike. Gee, what was your first clue, Rod? <laughs> All right, come to Papa. <laughs> oh, wow. Uh, that's a lot of spiders. Fortunately, a few quick circles and high spikes. <laughs> it's really funny to watch him play the games. Certain that was a trend. <laughs> <laughs> it seems like too that these a lot of these first renditions of iPad games that are action like this. There's a lot of cuts. So Infinity Blade Dungeons will bring a robust crafting no, system, I mean, dynamic dungeon crawling all to the No, 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 no. Blade, I mean, okay, they're telling the story, and you got to watch a video uh, kind of Infinity thing right yeah. instead yeah. of actually story playing the game. Thanks everybody for and playing. Thanks normally, they don't have the skip button to them. Thanks, <laughs> yeah, I, I don't know. I don't play enough to know what's yeah. normal. Crazy. I'm gonna need a few weekends off to catch up and play. Uh, as you may recall, when we launched the first iPad, we launched some software applications with it yeah. to demonstrate how this far is, uh, you could my go favorite part. with creativity software. And that was iWork. We launched iWork with the first iPad. And it really set Not a iWork. high bar for what's possible. As you know, iWork includes keynote, pages, and numbers. And we're updating them for the new iPad. Do you have it for the iPad? You're going to find yeah. new applications sunny with new charts and animations. Are they working? I mean, but most can you do everything? Is it very easy? Or? To take full of uh, display. And the actually, I don't use that that many times. Stunning. But I, when I use it, I felt it's really each. Yeah, intuitive. You, them before, you can know so free without reading the manual how to use it. Today on the App Store. Now with the iPad 2, That's what I didn't like either. You have to buy well. each one individually instead yeah. of giving you a clump of them. I like the applications. With GarageBand and iMovie. And they're being updated as well. GarageBand has a new version. They have some great new features. Smart strings. Yeah, I love GarageBand. Smart guitars, 
smart keyboard. I bought it. You can have your yeah, own I never do anything. Orchestra. I play guitar and my wife plays There's piano, so, so we sometimes you play with it. Song, you can go back <laughs> and change your performance. You can use iCloud to make sure you have your, your songs that you created on all your devices. And there's great new ways to share. Now they support. Great, they will right? announce it a little bit. But the best in a minute. Is something we call yeah, jam this session. is the one. Jam so session. Now up to four so if you have two iPad, you can play together and record it in the same device. The wow! Same so you and your wife, you yeah, you can play the guitar and she can play the piano. Right. It's really cool wow. to show you what it looks like. Get a very brief video. That is cool. Yeah, it's pretty cool. Why didn't someone come up with that before? <laughs> I know some very famous drummer in Korea. And he came to my house <laughs> and he played with this garage band and he played the drum and he needed three fingers. He, he played with the toe. <laughs> <laughs> so similar to like hitting the bass. Yeah, right? hitting you know? the bass with the toe is really <laughs> fun to funny to watch. <laughs> I thought that was a great story. <laughs> I could just picture him in my head. Yeah. <laughs> That's amazingly cool. Mm. Isn't that cool? At the end, don't you want the guitar to play? Just like smash it and no. <laughs> <laughs> See? Jokes. <laughs> One of the best things about the new garage band is the instant. But it didn't work because it wasn't that kind of music. <laughs> You smash guitars after some really hard <laughs> yeah. It's a free update to anyone who's already purchased it, and it's available today from the app store as well. That's garage. So you must be doing all kinds I of updates today. Awesome. Yeah. <laughs> a new update with right. an amazing new feature. Yeah, I use this. Come on. iMovie from the Mac to the iPad, we reimagined how you do video editing in a multi I think you will like this. You have daughters. With this marquee where you can pick your projects or create a new one. Well, now, not only can you create a movie, but you can also create a movie trailer as well. This is something we had brought to the Mac, and customers have loved it because it is so fun to be scripted right through how to create an amazing, quick and easy video piece. So all you do on the iPad is you select from a bunch of different styles and templates, and you're presented can you, with a simple interface for creating your movie trailer. There's never you know, been video editing like this. In sections of iMovie, can you speed it up? Your movie studio name is going to so be like this part of the video, and then Instead of walking normally, all of a sudden they're like, mm. yeah, I think so you can make a speedium. So where it tells you exactly you what shot you need, like a on your iPad too? An action shot, oh, a shot. I, I don't know about But for the first yeah, time, I haven't ever, tried it on, you have a device on the iOS version, but you can outline the Mac the version, you can. Your video, use the 1080p camera to record the video, and then play it back on that high resolution display. Wow, so it has storyboarding. A yeah. Way wow. Video editing. That is cool. Let me Very show easy. You a video to make some of trailer. Just one example of the kind of trailers you can create with the new iMovie on the new iPad. You have to do this with your daughters, definitely. <laughs> but you know, just the storyboarding ability within it, that would be really cool. But storyboarding is only for a trailer feature, like this one. I tried this with my Mac version, and they don't support the Korean font. So the font looks ugly with Korean. <laughs> oh, that cake looks good. What's that? That cake looks good. <laughs> I want to yeah. eat some of that cake. I'm hungry. <laughs> you know, they record this. Uh, Theme songs with some famous orchestra. And that music they went to Bean or somewhere to record it. With the trailers, all pre-recorded by a symphony orchestra, just so that you can use it mm -hmm. in your own movie trailers. iMovie, it's 4.99. It's a free update to anyone 
It doesn't work on my it's iPad. Today. It's my iPad yeah. One. <laughs> Soon. Yeah. You already paid for it though, right? For it, right? To make up our life. Pay for the iMovie? Yeah, I pay for the iPhone version, so I guess it's universal. On the Mac, there's three applications, and one of them is the most popular one of all. So I am really excited to tell you that today we're introducing iPhoto for iPad. Yeah. And it is This is really amazing. great. Now you're probably wondering, well, why do I need an iPhoto on the iPad? I've already got the camera app. I've already got a Photos app. And they're great for the things you do every day. But if you're someone, like many of us are, who truly love the photos they take of their family and their friends, and want to do even more with your photos, that's what iPhoto is for. With iPhoto, it'll use the same photo library on your iPad or iPhone, but it gives you great new ways to browse through all those photos. And it has truly breakthrough ways to edit your photos with new multi-touch gestures. We've packed it with professional quality effects. Glad we didn't make a and photo editing app. And brushes <laughs> for applying those effects. And if you want to use more than one device, let's say you want to take a picture you know, with your iPhone 4S, a week ago, to keep your Adobe released a Photoshop iPad, for iPad. That they must have had rumors. They must have heard that this is coming out. resolution photos over between your devices. <clears throat> and we've invented a great new way to share your photos with your friends in a way to tell stories of the places you've visited and the events you've been at. We call these photo journals. And these photo journals use iCloud as a great new way to share your photos. They scared me. And to a little show bit because you, brand you can drag the pictures in and make a line really like you can make some scrapbooks. Our chief architect but for photo and video. It doesn't seem that you can Randy. post to some of your blog or something. Thanks, Phil. So ever since the introduction of the iPad, we've seen its potential for digital photography. To be able to have something so light but and portable to carry around with my you question is, instead of looking around a laptop is really amazing. If I'm using iPhoto on my iPad, I have to have all those photos on my iPad. Take advantage of multi touch and take it to all Yeah, I don't want to waste up my space with all those photos. But you can. So pretty much what I do is I take a bunch of pictures and then once I get it on my Mac, I just dump them from my iPad, which is going to make this useless for me. Beautiful shelves to show you all the photos that are on your device. Yeah, but like the case, you take some picture on your iPad and you directly edit it and post it somewhere. You get to see all the photos you have here. If we tap on one, we can take a look. We bring up the editing interface. It's very customizable. I can swipe in from the side. To they don't have the, the new features, view. but their UI the is very innovative. To change the number of columns here. I can even flip this from left to right for left-handed or right-handed layout. Now, these are photos from a trip that I recently took to Antarctica. I took along a digital SLR, took over 3,500 pictures, and used this the camera connection kit. Uh, he made the iMovie the application there. iPhoto. When you're dealing with oh, lots and lots of photos like that, one of the first things you want to do is find the best photos. And there's some great ways for doing that. I, I don't like his earring. You can simply tap on things to take a look at them. <laughs> but if you want to compare photos, I can just press and hold and bring them up side by side. A lot of times you have a situation like this where I've got a bunch of pictures of the seal, and I can manually press and hold to compare those, but I can also let iPhoto do it for me. If I just double tap there, it's going to actually analyze the thumbnails and find all the similar photos Amazing. and put them up side by side for me so I can compare them. Now, when I want to go through and find the best ones, like the second one in the first column, he's not looking at the camera, I'll just swipe down. That one disappears. The one at the bottom, same thing, he's not looking at the camera, swipe down. If I want to see them larger, I just tap. It goes to a larger side, I, size, I can swipe. His eyes are kind of closed there, so I'll swipe down, I'm not looking at the camera. So now I'm down to two. The one at the top's nice, but I think I like the expression on the one at the bottom better, so I'm going to swipe down on the one on the top. Now I can zoom in by just pinching apart, and you can see the amount of, the kind of detail that I have here. If I bring up my info panel, the reason for this, this was shot on a Nikon D300. It's a 12 megapixel image, and all 12 megapixels are available here. In fact, I can work with images up to 19 megapixels on the, on the iPad. Really huge. And on the retina display, these images look absolutely 4, amazing. So now that we've chosen sweet. the image, the best, the best one of that group, I'll touch the flag button to mark it. Once I've chosen a number of photos and flagged them, I can tap at the top of the thumbnail column and select to just view the flagged photos. Photos like this uh, penguin staring contest here. Once you've uh, got the photos, we have some great sharing options. I'll tap the share button. 
We have things like email, we have Twitter, Flickr, photo Facebook. Photo beaming, so you can you directly can send, send the photo to your iPhone Once you've chosen or any the devices best photos, you want to without make them look uh, iCloud. Better. And we've got first. some great tools for that. Jump over to another al uh, album here. So here's a nice photo, but we can make that look even better. Down at the bottom along my toolbar, I'm going to tap the Auto Enhance button, and we're going to automatically adjust the contrast and color of the image to make it look better. But you'll notice the horizon line is not quite level. So I'm going to, down along the, in the lower left here, I've got my tools. I'm going to tap on the first one, which is my crop tool. And iPhoto is going to automatically analyze the photo and find the horizon line. Yeah. It's drawn a line across, and I have a button on the right side. And I just touch that button, and it straightens the horizon line for me. Right. So I'm... So with just two touches, I'm able to go from this... You know, this is a very obvious horizon line. Yeah. Right what if you're taking a picture of like a bunch of buildings and stuff? Is it going to find a horizon line? The original to the yeah, one I'm working with. Yeah. Now the crop tool that also has some like multi-touch to touch, features right. to it. So I can just use my fingers to pinch apart and pan around. If I turn my hand, I can actually rotate. I've got a dial at the bottom that allows me to do the same as well. I can grab a corner and change the cropping. Or if I want to go to some standard sizes, I tap the gear in the lower right corner and it brings up some standard sizes. So say I want to do a square crop there and I can just reframe and just like that, I can crop the photo. It now another square, thing that you it? run into a lot of photos <laughs> is things that are too light or too dark. And the second this tool I have is my exposure tool. And this brings up our unified control at the bottom that allows me to adjust the shadows, the highlights, the brightness and the contrast but I can do this in a great multi-touch way as well. The shadows in the lower left corner are a bit too dark. So I'm just going to touch my finger in the lower left, and it brings up these controls, and I just slide upwards in there, and up come the shadows. Oh, you don't see clearly, but the dark part looks the same, the same thing works for color. I'll switch to my color tool, and now I'm just going to touch and slide up, and it's going to adjust the saturation. So I'm able to go from this to this, with just two touches of my finger. It's really fun and really easy. Now sometimes you want to adjust just a portion of an image. These multi-touch controls allow me to do that. I can touch in the sky and just slide to the left and I'm going to be able to darken or lighten my sky. So just with one slide of my finger, I go from this to this with a nice deep sky. Really, really easy. Do, color you've seen this before. Right? Maybe balance. I should just wait and great listen. Tools for white balance. But have a brand new one. <coughs> one of the nice things about Instagram is they have predefined the skin tone filters. Control. Yeah, filters. Can you create your own and filter in this, this and, around, it's live and save a filter? Or whatever's under the loop. And I just drag this uh, on anything with their skin tone. Not that I know. I'm able to go from this uh, I don't think they have. Over to a really you nice can save image. the filters. But really, really easy. You can now, sometimes do you run stuff into that situations in an image, like make you one, look like uh, where Instagram part of the image photos. Is nice, like the sky. But yeah, but it gets, kind of dark, personally for me, I'm not super into photography, so I really love my brush Instagram and just great press a button and do it. So once I've set hair, something up, it'd be nice. Saturation, I just don't have to mess with it anymore. That I can do. I'm going to go ahead and tap on my lighting brush, and now I'm just going to use my finger to work on the image. I just rub over the image, and these brushes are set up to work in a very soft the way. You just go doing back and forth a couple of rubbing times on her on face to make it brighter. And so I'm oh. able to go from this to this and get a very natural looking change to the image just using my finger with the multi-touch on the screen. Oh, interesting. I think this is really, really good for some professionals or semi-professionals. So mm. a great set of brushes that I can use and like everything else on iPhoto, it's all non-destructive. So I can go back and make changes to any of this. Why don't you like his earrings? I'd like. Sorry? Now, Why don't you like his earrings? The next thing I'm going to show is uh, we have because... some great effects. That's my fifth I don't know details, but when the guy uh, has a earring on his book of right here, ear, then he sends for some gauges. Right? Yeah, right here. Right here. So black black but that's, that's, that's old. I don't think really people follow it anymore. That was like 20, 30 years ago. Didn't he wear it on both sides? Yeah, he wears on both sides anyway. Along this strip down here, and I can get all kinds of different effects. I just slide my finger to where I like it with kind of a dark sky. I kind of like the way that looks. And then I've got a couple of extra options here, like I can touch on the vignette. And Too bad using it my finger, also like did, doesn't work on iPad 1. <laughs> I tried to download it, but I couldn't. 
So are we've you, got some great photographs. Are you going to get an iPad effects. 3? We've also got some great yeah. artistic yeah. effects. Yeah, so like who cares? I have to wait. And <laughs> watercolor. They can be applied with just a couple So then of your wife's going to be going, hey, I want to use that. Yeah. <laughs> Sorry, that's what we're working on. I've had one. Chosen your images, <laughs> right. made them look good. You Where's want the to be camera? Able to share them. <laughs> yeah, that's your way of doing Sorry, that. Sorry, you don't have camera. Switch over here to an event. We've got a set of pictures from a trip to Thailand. And I'm going to go ahead and select to share those. I'm going to choose journal, choose all. We'll give this a name. And when I say create journal, it's automatically going to lay these photos out on the pages, one for each day of the trip. And then when I go ahead and show these, we end up with all my and photos laid out. also you can't out. drag really photos beautiful from looking some layout. web services. Really cleanly laid out. You can out only here. use the photos in the if iPad. If you marked photos the with a caption is or marked <laughs> photos, those photos would be the ones that are preferred into the And you questioned that? <laughs> it's really easy to adjust this as well. I just touch the edit but button in the upper right corner. Where does it save this and move to be able to share with other people? Here. I can. That's what I want to know. I want to know the file type. Reframe it. They, here they really say so you really can upload it to, to iCloud to around. share to friends, but and you can post really it to the web. It but I don't story know along what format it is. And we have some great story elements that you can add. Got a palette of them up here. I can just grab, drag them in on the screen here. I'll just double tap. I happen to have some text on the clipboard to, as an example there. We have some great other elements I can put in. I have a calendar element that I can drop in, which automatically picks up the date from the photos around it. Same thing for a map. Maps automatically pick up the location of the photos around them. And then you can pinch and pan to align them just how you like. We even have a weather item, which is going to use the, the date and the location to look up the weather for that date. Yeah, they look at the weather for the day. It's a little idea, but it's really interesting. So these are really fun to put together, and they allow you to really put some story around your photos. But once you put this together, they look great on your iPad, but you want to be able to share them. We have a great new sharing option where we can share to a new feature of iCloud, where this gets published up to iCloud, and then you can share a link with your friends and family that they can then view in any web browser, on their uh, on an iPad or on a laptop, any place in the world. So it's really easy to share this with your friends and family. So it just creates now, a link. I've shown here you can't really embed can it. also be done right. on the iPhone. They say the universal that you can watch so it on the web browser. So I think it's even the journal in creation HTML can be done on iPhone as well. And that is iPhoto for iOS. Thanks very much. Yeah, yeah that looks like pretty interesting. Yeah. yeah. How much? Thank you, Randy. Same price. $4.99. Truly yeah. a great piece of photo software. It's you got to download it. Four ninety nine. <laughs> it's available starting today on the App Store. So I, know about, I don't know about you, but... Probably. I want to make one of those iCloud thingies. Starting to play with mm. my photo library. And the real amazing thing is if you step back and think That means i got to go and get pictures all of iLife that I've already dumped off my iPad. <laughs> all, all new versions of these Unless it's going to be like a so screen captures of Blasi. Yeah. <laughs> you can make a journal for Blasi. <laughs> what was the weather like? <laughs> <laughs> what was the weather like when I took the screen capture? <laughs> Put a map. <laughs> Yeah, it's almost now. at almost the end. They showed a video. We believe technology is at its very best when it's invisible. When you're conscious only of what you're doing, not the device you're doing it with. An iPad is the perfect expression of that idea. It's just this magical pane of glass that can become anything you want it to be. And that's why so many people in so many different places are using it for so many different things. It's a more personal experience with technology than people have ever had. And now, with the new iPad, we're Asian. elevating that experience <laughs> by dramatically improving Not Korean, the fundamental elements <laughs> yeah. that define it. We gave it a powerful new A5X chip for stunning graphics, a 5 megapixel iSight camera with our state-of-the-art optics. The speed of 4G LTE. We created amazing new software 
that redefines what you can do with music, movies, you notice. and photos. <clears throat> and all of this is brought to life on the Retina display, the highest resolution display ever on a mobile device. You notice they're using Vimeo, not YouTube? What's that? You notice they're using Vimeo, oh, yeah. not yeah. YouTube? Right. So when you enhance the display, you enhance yeah, everything. I, I, know. I, heard, I, I saw that article that just their relationship with Google is not good. It's got a resolution good, of so. 2048 by 1536. That's 3.1 million pixels, four times more than the previous iPad, and over a million more than what's called high definition on other devices. I like devices. what they did in this and video. And all these pixels into a display that's just 9.7 inches. But engineering it wasn't uh, as simple as just jamming in more pixels. Technical visualization. A pixel is made up of display. red, green, and blue sub pixels. I like, I like it. With a signal telling each one how, they and how much to light up. Explain That's how colors are created. The way but the when you behind speak four the times the pixels into the same space, signals can get design. crossed, colors become distorted, and images get fuzzy. To solve this, we had to elevate the pixels onto a different plane and separate them from the signals. It's a major breakthrough. And it's the key to making the pixels so small and so close together that the human eye can't even distinguish them. So type looks razor sharp, and you'll see details and photos that you never knew were there. A wider color gamut brings out even more detail and gives you colors that are incredibly rich, deep, and vivid. This isn't just the most advanced display you've ever held in your hand. It's the most advanced display you've ever seen. The iPad is known for its fluid graphics performance, but because the Retina display has four times the pixels to drive, you need a lot more power. So when we designed the new A5X chip, we gave it quad-core graphics. It makes everything you do feel really fast and smooth. And it's so efficient, the new iPad still gets the same great 10-hour battery life. To go with a beautiful display, we added a new iSight camera. It takes 5 megapixel photos using the same advanced optics uh, we developed yeah, for the iPhone 4S. And it shoots gorgeous 1080p HD video at up to 30 frames per second. Yeah, the but previous the design was not really good. It looks like just is its next generation lodging your iPhone. It works with more bands. Man, did you hear? See the bottom is see-through. So yeah, it connects that's to more cool. of the world's fastest data networks, all the way up to 4G LTE. With all the amazing technology built into the new iPad, we had an opportunity to create software that is truly groundbreaking, and that meant completing the iLife family of apps. There's a new version of GarageBand that lets you wirelessly connect up to four iOS devices. So, you so you're definitely getting one because you're still using the iPad 1. Right? If you had an iPad 2, do you think you'd upgrade? We made iMovie even no, I don't think it's worth upgrading for a normal HP person. Video and turn it like into all the bloggers saying, I think, think they're on a single device trying to sell this to the new ever. users, not the previous users. And now we're they, bringing they want to make the, the market larger. It's unbelievably powerful and so simple to use. So the smart they're, they're making let you go through iPad to be really quick. top tablet just every tap year. They are you know, making it better and better, like better so that so other companies cannot follow, follow With multi-touch gestures, you can make your blue sky bluer. You can apply dozens of professional quality effects. You know, I, I got an <coughs> idea from you, and journals, you so I'm kind of following it too. You, never could before. you skip a generation. These yeah. new so instead of getting a new one every year, you skip a generation and then get a new one. Yeah. The iPad so this year I'll get the iPhone 5 because I'm still using the technology. iPhone 4. I didn't get the S. Mm. And, and now with the new iPad, we now I'm questioning. That millions of people love. Yeah, I want the better and camera. It's the ultimate iPad. That's the only thing and that think I'm really sold see that's going to make it do. worth an upgrade to me is Just the camera. IPhone. And is the camera really enough for me to upgrade? So, I don't know. I don't know if I'm going to upgrade. And especially if you're going to get one, then we can use it for the company. Yeah. I right? think the new so. iPad will really change what people believe is huh. possible with kind of torn this category of device. Yeah, well, yeah, we let it sink in for a while. Even more. <laughs> yeah, I can see so your, along with the new iPad, you, uh, what's going on in your head. head. <laughs> yeah, and it's it kind of... The line as well. Do you know, it starts oh, at 16, 16 okay, gigabytes of 499. Well, I'm really excited to tell you that starting today, the iPad 2 will start at just 399. Expanding the market. Yeah. 
this is really huge. So many more people can afford to get into this brand new groundbreaking technology on this amazing device. So many more schools can afford to move faster. Yeah, to I saw many people saying on Twitter the that the they'll just buy iPad 2. It's a really big deal. And now the line looks like this. But I don't know. If you're Start spending an iPad 2 for just 399, <laughs> yeah. an extra $100 is not that much. And the new iPad at 499 all the way up to 829. So there really is something I'm torn for between every 16 and 32. Well, that's uh, I, I, today. if I were going to, if I, I don't know what I'm going to do, but at minimum can, I would get this 32. Yeah, that's what I'm thinking because of the iPad yeah. One doesn't have camera, so I don't need that big storage. But if you have camera to take videos, it would be I amazing. Be new space. iPad. Mine would be torn between 32 and 64. For the very mm. popular iPad 2. An amazing software like this iPhoto is 16 and gigs, and I'll never do that again. <laughs> just, we I'm always bumping up, and you know, because of that, I don't watch my any podcasts on this. Mm. You know, I can't carry iPad. video. I want to do all my video editing in an iMovie, but. I have to make sacrifices. Okay, I want to do my video, then I can't have music and I can't have, <clears throat> you know, podcasts and a bunch of stuff. Yeah. So, when made a, a big mistake. Becomes this good. Yeah. Colors are more vibrant. Words are pin sharp. Everything is more brilliant. And I really believe, when a screen you know, this good. They're going to add Siri. They've got to add Siri. I don't know why they did it. I think the main reason is the server. If too many people are using this Siri at the same time, the server will be over the yeah, years. That's a good point. Yeah. <clears throat> My feeling is, you know how Apple has a reputation of saying, you don't want that. You don't need that. And so, <clears throat> like an iPad 1, there's no camera. I think they assumed. Hey, you don't need a camera. You've got your iPhone. You're not going to be taking pictures of this. You know, so maybe the same assumption. Hey, you don't need Siri on an iPad. So, but server maybe sounds more. Server issues sound more. They put the dictation in. So, so many innovative people. You know, there's no other reason, right? Since they have dictation. Yeah, but I want Siri. Uh, and Siri can't do it yet, but I want Siri to launch apps kind of and yeah, I mean, for the searching. In such a you know, they don't have no other reason to not including Siri other than the server issue it's what we because they to do. had the dictation in the learning. It's what we stand for. And across the year, you're going uh, to see... I really miss the Steve Jobs after I watched this of keynote. This kind of innovation. This we is the first are just big announcement after. Thank you very much for joining us. Yeah, but I think you know, in actuality, I think th this kind of good because <clears throat> the, if the first one is too good and too similar to Steve Jobs, then they'll always be compared in the future. But this one, to me, the presentation skills are good, but it's a little bit disappointing. Yeah, they, they, there's not that much difference between an iPad two. Yeah. You know, so everybody feels a little bit let down. So their next presentation, if they do something special, then we're all excited again. Wow, wow, yeah, they blew it out of the water. You know, because of that, our, now our expectations have been lowered about the next thing they're going to present. So maybe it's, in the yeah. long run, it's good. Yeah. I think the iPhone and iPad, that, like he said, the post-PC era, the devices will last like, five or ten years from now, and I think Apple will continue to um, lead that market. But what I'm worrying is, can they make another innovative device or uh, product after Steve Jobs? Yeah, there's there was no talk about the television. That's been... Right. Everybody's been talking rumors about this Apple television. You know? Yeah, they just updated Apple TV a little bit. That's right. all. And just the 1080. Yeah. It's definitely not an upgrade. Right. I think so. Worth the upgrade to me. The UI change is nice. But, but When I see the UI change of Apple TV, they show all the icons, right? So that gives us uh, gives a hint to they'll allow installing apps on the Apple TV. 
That'll be huge. That's yeah. what I was uh, hoping. Right. You know, e even it, it's not the best case scenario, but uh, even like blogsy. You know, I mean, sit with a keyboard and have your full screen to be able to type if you want. Really? <laughs> yeah, <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't know. You have big pictures. You could drag in the big yeah. pictures kind of thing. I, I don't know. Uh, but that's what I'm saying. Maybe Blogsy isn't the best example of it, but even Blogsy would be interesting. Yeah. But definitely other apps. It's just ridiculous that you can't do it on the Apple TV. Yeah. Why can't you install the CBS or the NBC right, News right, and, exactly. and watch those? In the future, the channels will be apps. So. I think it will be like subscription. You pay some dollars every month and you can watch some channels. One thing they have to figure out to me, if they're going to do that, and it's not only Apple, it's everybody, someone needs to figure this out. If you have a cable hookup, you sit with your remote and you go click, 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 and you can go through. Yeah. But if you're doing it on an Apple TV or a Roku, Roku or, you know, on Roku, HTPC or anything, you've got to know what you're doing. There is no clicking to discover. You know, you can go and say, okay, what TV shows might I want to watch? And then you got to select it and download it. You don't get that experience of clicking between channels. And I, that's mm. the only thing I miss. Yeah, I it's understand. Like, right. I'm bored. I don't know what I want to watch. Yeah, right. Oh, this is on TV. Right. Someone's got to figure that out. Once that gets figured out. But I think the the previous TV will be remain too, isn't it? Like the for, for the person like what you said. The oh, the, yeah. Original TV will stay. I think around cable TV will stay around for quite a few years. But I think eventually it's dead. I think eventually, who knows how many years, we'll get all our television through an internet connection. Hmm. And how they figure that out, I don't know. But right now because of this transition and all the broadcasters are so scared they're taking their shows and okay only these shows and only from our internet site and you know, all these different rules and everything so you have to deliberately go to their site choose the show you know it's not a seamless okay what's on CBS what's on NBC what's on Fox what's on you, know, you don't get that same experience mm. so TV. Yeah, maybe someone would make an app that you randomly show some channels or something. <laughs> yeah, but then you still have the problem is, you know, with the television, you're getting it through cable, so as soon as you click, it shows in the middle of that episode mm -hmm. or whatever. You know, that's much different than going, oh, this is on this channel, this mm -hmm. is on Start It. That, that's right. a different feeling, right. a different experience. But maybe because I'm old. <laughs> you know, maybe the younger generation, they grew up in a situation watching it always on delayed like that. Yeah, actually, I don't, I never do that. I never do like changing channels. Maybe it's just my personality, but I only watch TV when I want to watch some episode. Mm. Mm, yeah, maybe it's generational change yeah. or something. But, you know, a lot of the shows I learned about was just by randomly clicking and then Oh, what's this show? Oh, this is funny. Mm -hmm. But without that, the internet is not a good way to go, what's on television? Is it funny? Is it not funny? Mm -hmm. you know, it's very hard to discover yeah. new shows that you want to watch. Mm -hmm. And I remember, too, you know, we, we were in the process of moving. When I was very young, I must have been yeah. third grade or somewhere around there. <clears throat> And so some of our stuff was in storage. Our color television was in storage, but we had a, a small black and white television. Mm. And when you turned on the black and white television, it took a little bit to warm up. So this is pre-digital, it's all analog. You know, the tube yeah. warming up. And finally, okay. eventually after, I don't know, a minute, two minutes, three minutes, <laughs> it'd warm up enough and the television would like slowly come on. And then we unpacked all our stuff and in our new house and got it all set up. And then I went to watch television, yeah. and I turned it on, and it instantly came on. And I oh. remember just like, wow, oh, flying right. backwards, it just shocked me so much. <laughs> you know, it was a new television at the time? So, uh, I, no, it, it, we just had it in storage. Oh. So, but, you know, because 
you don't, sometimes what I'm trying to say from that story, I guess, is you don't know what you're missing unless you experience it. So right. maybe the young generation, if they've grown up all the time, having to go between internet sites and say, I want to watch this show and I want to watch that show, this show, they've never experienced, and I'm not saying now because they have, but maybe in the future, yeah. they've never experienced the ease of just mm -hmm. going ching, 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 so they won't miss it. Hmm. I don't know. Yeah, right. And I think other thing that can alternate it is uh, <clears throat> curation. Every, everyone talking about curation thing, right? So I think social curation can help that. Like, they can suggest what your friends watch it, or like the genius, depends on what you watch it before, they can suggest the new things. Yeah, I don't know, maybe it can't be like you said, like instantly shows what is showing now, but in the future maybe some the network can be faster, and there's another way. Mm. Yeah, it might be better. And yeah, curation is, that's a good step forward, but right now, because you have all these little islands of content, <clears throat> you know, some in Hulu, and you know, some on CBS, and some on NBC site, and it, it's, curation becomes very difficult, I think. Mm. You know, someone can't make a list for you, and you just start watching that list, or thumbing through that list, you gotta go, okay, this one's good. Oh, that means I gotta go to NBC and check it out. Or this one's good. I gotta go here. So. Mm. One thing, maybe we missed it, and I saw it in the live blog, but the Apple TV now support the playlist. You wanted that, didn't you? Yes. <laughs> really? Yeah, of that's only, what I read. but of only Apple content. I uh, even I, with just my podcast, I would love yeah. a playlist. I'd get yeah. tired of. Okay, that one's done. Start the next one. Yeah, why can't it just go like on an I iPhone or, you know? Yeah, we have to check it, but I that's what I read. Okay, well that would be amazing. Yeah, yeah, and I I have what is it? Uh, Plex and where's where's my remote? My Apple TV remote, the little white one. I lost, <laughs> I, lost the, I lost the silver one that comes with it. I can't find it anywhere. It's so frustrating. So I have this old one from uh, like my iPad mm. television hookup. So actually still, it works with... Yeah, it's very good that it still works. Yeah. So yeah, I have Plex and XBMC mm. set up. So I'm sure playlists are not going to work. Okay. Yeah, jailbroken. <laughs> hey, you know, my iPad is not jailbroken. <laughs> but but without this being jailbroken, basically what it became was just an iPad viewer. You know, an iPad, I'm sorry, not a podcast viewer. That's all I did with it. Mm. So it pushed me to want yeah. to jailbreak it because it's just too confining, which I don't feel with the iPad. I don't feel with my iPhone. I don't jailbreak them. Yeah. So. It'll be much easier, you know. Me also, I have the Apple TV too, and only thing I use is the AirPlay. Um, I don't really browse some content on Apple TV, and one of the reasons is they don't have some Korean content, and mm -hmm. they don't have Korean store, so I can't really buy something. They don't even sell it in Korea. Right, right. I right. bought it from the States. Yeah, me too, I bought it. <laughs> Had it shipped over from the states. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but but I found if I use the AirPlay, that you lose the use of the device. So when I'm I'm on my iPad, I'm like, okay, I want to AirPlay this video. Now I want to search the internet while I'm watching this video in the background. You can do that. You couldn't before. No, you can't. But in some apps, there's an app that you can't do that. I don't know why. Maybe they. Oh. programmed it wrong, but like normal app, like the Apple's official movie apps, you can play with the AirPlay and you can go to other apps and do everything you can. Because basically what I was doing is I was trying to use uh, Boxy, the Boxy app. Yeah, and Boxy doesn't work. I right, and I wanted to, okay, watch it. Yeah, even, even if you, I mean, Boxy doesn't work even when you, when the device is turned off, so you 
you have to turn off that auto automatic turn off thing. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, automatic yeah. shut down. Or... Yeah. Uh -huh. Okay, I think we've bored everybody enough. Yeah. <laughs> so my synopsis is it's a nice device. I don't I'm not I can't decide yet whether or not I'm gonna get it. I'll get it. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Bye guys. Okay, see you next time. Bye.